Welcome to the Glitch Step tutorial series. Let's start with a quick introduction and overview of what Glitch Step is and how to use it. Glitch Step is a monophonic 16 step performance oriented sequencer and AAV3 MIDI processor extension. It allows you to manipulate your sequence in real time, creating dynamic and varied musical patterns. For these tutorials, I'll be using AUM, which is a versatile AUV3 host and supports MIDI processor extensions and allows audio units to send MIDI output to other audio units or external MIDI devices. You'll see that my voice is being recorded directly into AUM on a dedicated audio channel. This setup allows me to provide clear audio explanations while demonstrating the features of Glitch Step in real time. First, let's load Glitch Step into AUM. Let's create a MIDI track and select Audio Unit MIDI Processor from the list. Find Glitch Step and it's loaded. Next, I wanna load an instrument to use with Glitch Step. I've got one in mind. It's Dagger from Beep Street. So I'm gonna go ahead and search for it quickly and load it up. Now I just need to connect Glitch Step to Dagger. So I'll select the MIDI output from Glitch Step and connect it to the input from Dagger. And we're good to go. Glitch Step has a user-friendly interface designed for performance. You'll see the main sequence controls and knobs associated with patterns at the top, the slice grid below it, and the Glitch XY pad and various buttons for settings next to that. This layout makes it easy to access and manipulate your sequences. Glitch Step's interface is responsive and adapts to different orientations and window sizes. This means whether you're using it with an iPad in landscape mode or a phone in portrait mode, or just resizing your window in the host, the interface will adjust to provide the best user experience. One of the great features of Glitch Step is the ability to load multiple instances. You can load different instances of Glitch Step to control different instruments that you have loaded. So let's load another instance of Glitch Step. Going to go ahead and size this one into portrait mode. Same with this one as well. And then I can put them side by side. And when we have them like this and we're controlling different instruments, we can go ahead and change the theme on Glitch Step to match an instrument we might have. So if I select Ember Flow for this one, it gives me this orange and blue one. And I could select a completely different theme for this one. Like say I had a purple and green synth that I wanted to control or drum machine. I could set this up and I could easily tell which instance of Glitch Step is controlling which instrument. Well, that's it for this introduction and overview. Stick around and I'll see you in the next video.